All right, so we're here with Singer Agronomics. We're here with Robert again, going through the shorter clips of um, products we have to offer and where they probably best fit. And I am not going to lie, I've been nerding out about this one. Uh, <laughs> nice. I absolutely love it. It's probably my personal favorite, um, and that is the Nitro Boost. Definitely. Okay. It's a great product, especially for efficiency. Well, and I, I always go back to two is, and maybe this is just Nebraska. It just seems like I have a lot of farmers. Um, we always want to be more efficient because we have the tools of a pivot. Uh, in my areas. So there's there's opportunities for us to be very efficient just in that aspect. But then you have products like this that even can help bring that number even higher. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So Nitro Boost, fill me in. Uh, how is it helping that plant? How is it making uh, our nitrogen use efficiency number increase or be better, I should say, be more efficient? Um, and where can we utilize this in your, your eyes as the best fit on most operations. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, Nitro Boost is a, a favorite product. I think the ideas and uh, the first discoveries for this product came out of fields in Ohio. Okay. And uh, we're walking fields, and you know how every year you cut one or you plant one slice closer to the fence? Every year. <laughs> and <laughs> whenever we put this down in the ground, it gave us that old fence row smell, like kind of that, <laughs> okay. that difference there. So it, it started this long-term investigation. Okay. So uh, Nitro Boost, it's nickel cobalt molybdenum. Uh, we initially, as an experimental, called it Nico Mo. Nico Mo. Nico Mo. And uh, <laughs> we use this to uh, increase nitrogen efficiency and inhibit denitrification. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. And uh, fully chelated. We chelate with amino acids, uh, different polyamines, to make near neutral chelates in that 7% okay. range. Okay. And Nitro Boost, I mean, you could use it on its own, but your best use of this product is anytime you're applying nitrogen. Period. Yeah. Okay. And I would balance balance with my rate. You know, okay. if I'm just going out at, at 50 pounds or something, maybe I just use an ounce. Um, okay. I would, the product is so strong. I really would never go above four ounces. It's a very low use per acre product. Well, and what's awesome is, I mean, five gallons goes a long ways. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? So it's one of those products that you don't have to worry about filling the shop full, uh, yeah, no, to, to no. make your nitrogen more efficient here. I yeah. mean, you're talking something that maybe you have four boxes to try on an operation. It, it, it's just a product that fits. You know absolutely. what I mean? Um, now, like you said, it always works best with nitrogen. I go back to fertigation, uh, throwing it in there, spreading that out. So maybe we're putting, you know, 30 pounds on, additional pounds. Okay, we put in ounce, ounce and a half, and just do that three times, and we'll mm -hmm. get to, you know, four and four and a half ounces as the year goes on. Sure, okay. exactly, exactly. You know, uh, trying to get that fit. What about um, just taking that Nitro Boost product and applying it with a fungicide application what does that make sense i know my brain goes that route but i want to make sure um based on what you've seen if that is a fit it's so it is but for completely different uh different reasons okay so nickel cobalt and molybdenum if you think of the plant we talk about photosynthesis all the time photosynthesis has these things called chlorophyll and chloroplast Okay. And they form using magnesium. There's a magnesium in the center of this crazy ring. Yep. Um, in your blood, it's so your or my chlorophyll and your blood, same deal. In your blood, though, it's iron. Yep. There's Hemoglobin. This, yeah, there's this iron with this crazy ring. Yep. In our plants, it's magnesium with a crazy ring. When we start getting into this soil biology, you know, there's different fungi and bacteria. The, the world, I mean, the soil is, I hate to use the word, you know, it's cliche, but it is teeming <laughs> okay. with microbes. It's yep. a book title, everyone. Yeah. But <clears throat> so this, it's, it's, it's amazing. Anyway, a lot of these different organisms that are in the soil, they have that same hemoglobin or chlorophyll, but it's powered by a different ring. It's powered by nickel. It's yep. powered by cobalt. And uh, so what we're doing from the nitrogen use efficiency standpoint is we are directly fertilizing that biology in the soil and allowing it to help our fertilizers be more efficient. It's going to stop denitrification. It's going to stop the, the volatilization of urea because the biology now is helping us manage that nitrogen. Okay. Now, what you're talking about with a fungicide is a little bit different. Okay. 
Okay. So, so, so time out. So what we just talked about is why it should be mixed with nitrogen. Yes. Okay. Just making sure we have a clear little yes. transition there. Now it's more of if you're doing more of a foliar feed with it. Yeah, and we spoke a lot, uh, you know, with Singular, with a product called Crop Stress Mix. Yes. And this is meant to, to go into a cell and stop the actual signal that causes stress ethylene. Okay. And uh, that's our diformal urea, yep. and we formulated for farmers for low use rates. Perfect, right? Now, nickel and cobalt, they have a, a little bit extra umph to them, I guess you want to okay. say. Okay, okay. So... When you're when you're a plant, there's a the, called the polyamine pathway. Okay. And the polyamine comes down. This is basically like chunks of amino acid that aren't fully formed yet. Okay. And uh, there's an enzyme called ACC oxidase, and this enzyme is basically the manufacturer, and it'll either turn that nitrogen and carbon that you've given the plant into these polyamines. Okay. And that's basically the fountain of life, and youth. Okay. And you get greenness and leaves and growth and things like that, right? Now, this ACC ACE can take that ACC and instead of making it into a polyamine, it can make it into the devil. It can make it into ethylene. Okay. So, okay. on the other hand, it can, on one hand, it can go to CHN and amino acids, polyamines. Okay. On the other, it can go to CH ethylene. Okay. And stress and okay. phantom yield loss. Okay. And the deci deciding factor is really this ACC oxidase. Now, cobalt in particular, very well documented, and nickel to some extent as well, and okay. probably just as good, completely kills ACC oxidase. So you okay. shut off the, the pathway to go to ethylene, okay. and it forces everything into this this growth characteristic. Okay, so I'm going to time out right there because if you haven't seen the cross, crop stress video, I think you should go back and look at it. And this question probably should have been the crop stress video, but we're here right now, so I'm going to ask it. So adding cobalt in that situation, you talked about how there's like a stress ethylene process and then just a natural ripening process with ethylene. Can you knock out that natural ethylene process with cobalt that it just keeps staying green yes really and uh you know if you don't if this isn't your intention that could be a real problem <laughs> well, um, yeah. that's it when we were first starting to evaluate this we had guys that were clogging combines the corn would stay green uh we actually needed frost uh at the time i was a researcher i uh, still studying all of this stuff and uh, we actually had to go in with Paraquat and, uh, and dry down some fields. Uh, <laughs> you can. Uh, this ended up turning into a product we developed to stop abortion. And uh, we use okay. it mainly on tropical crops, uh, soybean, pods like that. And uh, we can completely stop fruit and flower drop in a okay. tree with that. So, And we're talking like eight ounces yeah, these okay, so a little bit heavier rate in that situation. Four to eight ounces, compared. but in the grand yeah. scheme of the market, that is a very small rate oh, to have a season long control. Yeah. So it's it's scary powerful nickel cobalt molybdenum. So with that too, and maybe something to keep in mind, and I know labelers are gonna make you put this on the label too, but uh, with ruminant animals, if there is a over a abundance of molly compared to your copper ratio you can have issues there that's why um, it's yeah. the same thing it's the same deal you're okay. causing like the the night i'm not an animal guy yeah yeah please don't let me stick a foot in my <laughs> mouth but that's one of the reasons you get that nitrate toxicity when you graze on molybdenum because the molybdenum is also able to keep it in those more available forms got you okay so well that's good to know and i just want i know there's a lot of guys that graze corn stalks now i will be the first to say i've applied i've applied molly on a lot of crops and we haven't had an issue but again labels label just on a corn crazy. stalk i wouldn't i wouldn't worry about it at yeah. all yeah i'd be much more concerned with a green hay crop or if i'm coming out with my wheat you know a lot of times we'll graze the wheat in before you know it, it goes up Okay. See, you can yep. tell I'm not an animal guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, but we'll graze it in the fall, you know, after it came up to get some okay. good tillering. That yep. is when you'll cause these more molybdenum okay. toxicosis. Okay. But uh, if you're doing a stalk, a stubble, no, no, that's not going to be an issue at all. 
Perfect. And so, uh, we just add molybdenum to everything because we like adding warnings to our label. <laughs> That's <No. laughs> right. That's exactly right. Um, okay, so Nitro Boost. Okay, we talked yeah. about the micros. We talked about their pathways. Gosh, I mean, it's almost. I would say it's a no-brainer, but I'm probably biased. Uh, ni- no-brainer to put with your nitrogen source. Ah, uh, yeah, and it's an efficiency product for yeah. sure. And I mean, comparatively, use rates are are very low compared to most products. On yeah, the you should not use too much of it, or you do run into factors of late season. You're inhibiting things like dry down. We want the plant to be vegetative in the beginning. Yes, but we don't need vegetative plants in the end. So we want to make sure we're reproductive, we're adults, and we're drying down late in the season. I I have this crazy uh, trial that I want to do with it with with a silage. I know crop that I know is going to silage. Um, if they, we all know you you have the choppers out there, and sometimes you got to wait your turn, and then the corn gets too dry. Is there actually an opportunity there to keep that corn wetter longer? Yeah, and you absolutely can. And in fruit, uh, we get into some fruit work. I'm all over the world. Oh yeah. And uh, we can extend harvests uh, on some of these fruit crops up to 21 days. Okay. And we'll extend it so long that you can actually get the inside of the fruit to, to actually dry down. So if you're just going really? that long into the season, add some potassium to it. Okay. And, and this will help bring in some of the moisture so you don't have like a hollow fruit with, uh, yeah. Okay. So you can, I mean, you can extend it for just about as long as you want. Nickel, cobalt are not small molecules. I hate to say the evil word, but, you know, in some countries, these are considered heavy. And uh, Fair enough, yep. They're not leaching. They're staying put, and they're, having, uh, they're affecting a whole kingdom of life that uses very, very low rates, like parts per billion and trillion. Well, and like you were saying, too, I mean, precursor for some biology to help you with your nitrogen. Well, that's the thing. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, we can talk about heavy, but on the same token, it's a precursor. It's pretty clear Mother Nature and the guy up above had their system in place that they're probably they should probably should be there if it helps. Absolutely. So. And you know, that's one of the things. It's 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 well, it's hard to do the studies to prove uh, efficiency, but it's going to be even harder to do like peer-reviewed work on things like nickel, cobalt, molybdenum, because there's such an intermediary. Yeah. It is the living organism of the soil that okay. we're f- that's doing it. I see what you're saying. So we're just providing the limiting factor to those organisms. Okay. And we're cycling all of this into the ground. Well, that's, that's awesome. So Nitro Boost, okay, is an opportunity to make your nitrogen use efficiency go higher. Oh, absolutely. Low use rate. Not gonna lie, if you if you have nitrogen go on in the field, definitely in a liquid form, it makes a lot of sense. Oh, uh, or yeah. it'd be it'd be the best fit, the easiest logistically to add into an operation. Um, yeah, we've impregnated urea with it okay. for dry spreads. Okay, um, we like it with melted urea. Uh, okay. We actually have a line of melted urea, do like calcium, magnesium, and different things. We'll put in that, and th- we use this. We add this to that to increase okay. the efficacy there. Okay. Uh, but yeah, UAN twenty eight thirty two. We've used it with. Okay. I'm an amine guy. Uh, I'm not against nitrate, but yeah. I've always I I don't know. I can farm better with amine sources of nitrogen because I'm pretty anti gibberellin for most cases. Most times. And nitrate yeah. increases the gibberellic acid in the plant, so I tend to go more with the amines. They're more auxin, so it's more your style of farming, I guess. Okay. Okay. Well, Robert, thank you so much. Um, we have a list of these videos that we're doing, these shorter videos that kind of give a synopsis of what we're trying to um, trying to do here. And I, I just want to say thank you for your time and helping cover Nitro Boost. I know we got a couple more here to do. So that's great. Yeah. So thank no, you so it's much. It's great to have partners in the field. Yes. Yes. So, very much so. So helping farmers every day. Every day. Thanks. Guys, thanks for watching the content so far. If you would like to see more, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got all the full-length podcasts, other video information, tutorials on there. Also on all the major uh, podcast platforms and social media sites, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, etc. So if you like this, go ahead and check more out on all those platforms.